If you have a disability, your options for getting around can be a bit limited. You always have to plan before a journey. Say you want to get a bus somewhere. You have to let the bus staff know so that they can put an accessible bus on the route. Which is fine, as long as you plan well in advance and don't change your plans. I'm often asked, how accessible are private taxi cabs? Like anyone else, when going to work or visiting friends or going to a party, people with a disability sometimes want to book a private taxi. Not all offer accessible cabs and are not always available at the time you want to book. Just one more factor to consider. The drop curb is great because it means you can drive off the curb and not tumble over. But if it's blocked by a car, you might have to travel another 100 yards to the next one. Or the next one. Not much fun in the rain. Of course, if someone has parked their car on a pavement and blocked a route, well, you're not going anywhere anyway. For the life of me, I don't understand why some pedestrian crossings have no beep system. The bleep system is brilliant. You know it's safe to cross. Your guide dog knows it's safe to cross. Yet some crossings don't have it. Why is that? I know people who use Shop Mobility Scheme and they say it's great, gives them freedom and independence. Most of the larger stores have wider aisles designed for trolleys and this is perfect for wheelchairs and scooters. But it's nice to browse around smaller shops even if items are hard to get to. Staff can be very helpful and bring them to you. Of all places, public buildings are meant to be accessible to everyone. Unfortunately, our older public buildings are often hard to modernise. And despite the best intentions of designers, you sometimes feel a bit inferior having to enter a side door. Hearing loss can be very isolating. So venues and locations that use loop systems are very supportive to those with disability. If you lip read, you really need to know that there's someone you can speak to face to face.